Eliana Anderson. My name is Elysia Anderson. Once upon a time, there was a bunny. <laughs> no. <laughs> One day, Jesus went to Jerusalem on his donkey. They all gathered、um, twigs and they waved them in the air. They threw their coats on the on the ground. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna! It's the Son of God. Then, on the last night of with his friends, he had a meal with them. They ate the Last Supper. He said that to remember him every time they had that supper. He went to the garden to pray. Yes, it's Gethsemane. Gethsemane. But the Disciples fell asleep with the donkey. After Jesus prayed, mean girls took them away. So drugs were bad. Jesus said that he was God's son. They didn't like it at all. The people got so mad that they put Jesus on a cross. His mom and his friends were very sad because they loved him. He died because he wanted to forgive our sins. They brought him off the cross to a cave that had a stone, so he couldn't get out. Saturday, they were all sad and they were all scared. On a Sunday, they went to look and they saw he was not in there anymore. The tomb was empty. An angel told them that Jesus has risen from the dead. The women came running to the disciples to tell them, but they would not believe them. Jesus came in the room. They were all surprised and they were all happy. Since they were so happy, they had a month together. After they had so much fun, Jesus went onto a top of a hill and he waved goodbye all to his friends. He said, "I will come back someday." Why I'm gone? Tell everybody about me. And he went up to heaven. The disciples they told everybody that Jesus would always forgive them. Now I know that he loves me and my little sister Alicia and my mom and my dad and he loves everybody. That's why me and my sister love to dress up and go to church and be pretty as we celebrate Easter. By celebrating, we say to Jesus, "Thank you, and we love you." Hey, families! This is Zach, the children's director at our Wooddale Edina campus, and I'm Pastor Justin, and I'm at our Eden Prairie campus. And we are so excited that you are joining us today. We miss you. We miss seeing your faces, engaging with you, hanging out with you. But we are so happy that you are here because we have some awesome things planned for today. That's right, kids! Happy Easter, and we're going to have an amazing kids Easter service that you're about to experience. There's going to be all kinds of things. There's going to be fun games. There's going to be fun songs for you to sing, and we are going to tell you the most important story that we could ever tell you. It's the best story. It's the most incredible story that's ever happened in the history of the world. So this is going to be an awesome Easter experience for you here at Woods Kids. And talking about an awesome Easter experience, we're going to go ahead and transition into a worship song. So kids, if you're sitting down, stop that and get on up. Stand on up. Get your singing voices ready. And here's what I want you to do: everybody, get into their fighting stance because the first song we're going to sing is "Undefeated," about how Jesus is undefeated. So here we go. On. I'll hold my ground. I'm gonna crash the lies of the enemy. I won't back down. Cause I'm not alone. With you, my God, I'll conquer anything. In you, I have.
Welcome back, kids. I hope you had fun with that song. I love that one. It's one of my favorite songs. And of course, we're going to do our favorites here at Easter. But welcome back to the next part of our Easter Kids service at Woods Kids, where we are going to be playing a game. That's right, Justin. I brought half a dozen Easter eggs for us to play a game with. Now it's Easter, right? Mm -hmm. And Easter, some of you out there have probably colored some eggs. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going to go on an Easter egg hunt today, or you already did, or you got a basket and all that stuff's so awesome. But that's not really the point of Easter, is it? It's not. It's not the point of Easter at all. No, the point of Easter is that the tomb that Jesus was laid in is empty. That's right. And kids, you're going to learn more about that in the Bible story but I took that and applied it to eggs. Mm. You see, eggs are usually filled with a yolk and some extra stuff in there, right? Um, these eggs are not. You see, these eggs, just like the tomb, are empty. Well, at least five of them. One of them does have the yolk still in it. Wait, Zach. Yeah. What kind of chicken lays empty Easter eggs? Hmm, never thought about that. Huh, well. Anyway. Well, kids, think about that while, while we play the game, too. Anyways, so there are five empty eggs okay. and one nasty egg. So we are going to each pick an egg, and we're going to alternate between us. Once you touch an egg, you take it and uh, smash it against your face. I'm scared. One of us will get nasty, yolky egg face. Not it. For Easter. Not it. I Not it. you. All right. I, I can go first. All right, we'll see what happens. So, kids. Go ahead, root for one of us to win, and we're gonna see how this turns out. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? All right, They're here ready. we go. Well, I go first. Okay. I'm gonna pick green. I, I like green. Pick the nasty All one. All right, here we go. Oh, that feels heavy. Uh -oh. All right. Woo, it's oh, empty. It's empty. Oh, now All I'm right. scared. Okay, okay, my turn. I'm thinking empty, thinking, and my mind is empty. Okay, Let's here see. we go, here we go, ready? I'm going blue. Uh -oh. Nice. Uh -oh. Nice. That's good for you, not good That's for right. me. There's only harder. four eggs left. Um, I am a fan of purple. Okay. Go so I'm gonna pick that. <gasps> and there! Oh, empty. Oh, that basically means I'm gonna win. Oh, there's only three left. Yep. Um, okay. Pink, <laughs> yellow, orange. I'm gonna go. Yellow seems so nice and harmless. I'm gonna go yellow because it couldn't be in there. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. One, two, three. Empty! Oh, no. Ooh, that's right! Two right. eggs left, Zach! Ooh, kids, if you're doing the math, there are two eggs left, two of us left. And that means I have like a 50-50 shot right. of picking. Do I pick orange? Do I pick pink? Uh, what do you think? Which I one should I pick? Alright, I think I heard most people say pink. Okay. So that's the one I'm gonna pick. Oh, that's pretty light. That's, <laughs> that's oh. pretty light! I, <laughs> yeah! Alright, three, two, one! Oh, no! <laughs> Victory! Woo! I got egg on my face. Happy Easter, Zach. Here, let uh, me help you out, buddy. Here, I've got a rag uh, for you. Why don't you clean thank yourself you. up? Thank and kids, you. while Zach uh. is cleaning himself up, we're going to go to another song. It's called Thank You, God. We'll see you soon. Thank you, God.
I finally got all that egg off my face. That was pretty disgusting, to be honest. Well, kids, great, great job worshiping. Can you give me a huge air high five? Awesome. All right, well, hey, if you're standing, you can go ahead and sit down because the next thing we're gonna do is hear about an incredible Bible story. Now, this isn't just any Bible story. This is the most important Bible story that you or I will ever hear. So listen up, get ready to engage with it because this is incredible. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been making plans to silence Jesus. The things he said and did challenged the way they had always lived. He was upsetting the world as they knew it. It is better if one man dies for the people than if the whole nation is destroyed. Then one of Jesus' closest friends, Judas, betrayed to the religious leaders where Jesus would be praying after the Passover meal. The leaders sent soldiers to arrest Jesus, and he allowed the mob to take him. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. As Jesus was tied up and led away, Jesus' closest friends scattered, though Peter and John followed at a distance. What was it like for them? Try to imagine for a minute that you're Peter, only hours before Jesus told you. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. And you, Peter, protested that you would die before deserting. But now Jesus has been arrested. And if you get too close, they might take you too. So you trail along like a stray dog as soldiers haul Jesus inside the home of the high priest. What's happening in there? The servant at the door frowns as she peers at you. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? I am not. You're ashamed to lie, but what good will you be to Jesus if you get arrested too? You huddle close to the fire in the courtyard as voices float through a high up window. What's this foolishness you've been teaching? I didn't say anything in secret. Ask the people who heard me. They certainly know what I said. You feel sick. Now they've taken Jesus. You know nothing will stop them. Someone else asks whether you're one of Jesus' followers, and you snap. No, I'm not. Minutes later, another man asks whether he saw you in Gethsemane with Jesus. Your stomach churns. Nope, not me. You realize you have denied Jesus three times, just as he said, and all you can do is stagger to your feet and run away weeping. Now, imagine you're John instead of Peter. Somewhere in the chaos, you've lost Peter. So when soldiers haul Jesus away to the Roman governor, all you can do is follow, alone. From the back of the crowd, you witness the terrible drama as the governor Pilate brings Jesus out. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes. Pilate takes Jesus away for questioning. You can only pray that he sees through all the lies and stops this madness. You're horrified when Pilate brought Jesus out again, battered and bruised. I find no basis for a charge against him. No, crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate hands Jesus over to the soldiers who force him to carry the heavy beams of his own rough cross. You know where they are going. Golgotha. It's a hill outside the city. As in a bad dream, you force yourself to follow. Along the dusty road, you find Jesus' mother, Mary, her sister, and Mary Magdalene. None of you can speak. You arrive at Golgotha in time to see soldiers nail Jesus to the wooden bars with heavy spikes and raise the cross up high. 
You strain your eyes to read the sign placed above Jesus' head. King of the Jews. You nearly choke on dust and grit. You've seen Jesus do amazing, powerful things, and yet he's allowed himself to be taken and battered. You glance over and see Mary sobbing, so you place your hand on her shoulder. When you look back up, you see Jesus watching his mother through the pain in his eyes. Dear woman, here is your son. Jesus looks directly at you, eyes filled with love. Here is your mother. Yes, Lord. You are overwhelmed to know that Jesus trusts you to take care of his own mother. But the terrible truth sinks in. Jesus knows that he will die. He's planning on it, just as he's been saying for weeks. A short time later, you see him lift his gaze to heaven. It is finished. Then he bows his head, and you can see the life leave his body. All the air seems to leave your own lungs, too. You thought Jesus was God's chosen one. How could he be dead? Now, as we move ahead, imagine you're Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' close followers. Unlike so many others, you've dared to stay there, at the cross. And once Jesus is dead, you dare to follow the men who take his body for burial, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. A garden tomb. The evening has faded, and it's now the Sabbath. You want to honor Jesus by anointing his body with spices, but it will have to wait until the Sabbath is over. So you stay hidden indoors until early Sunday morning, then you make your way through the dark streets. The stone. What will I do about the stone? As you arrive, you recall that a heavy stone was rolled to block the entrance of the tomb, but now... It's gone! You gasp as you peer inside the tomb. Gray light reveals. <gasps> it's empty! Heart pounding, you race back through the streets to the home where the disciples are staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. You can see the shock in Peter's face. John gapes, and then they both begin to run to see for themselves. At a loss, you follow slowly weighed down with exhaustion and confusion. When you reach the garden, you see Peter and John ahead, trying to make sense of it. You hang back as they leave again. What more is there to say? As the first rays of dawn light up the garden, you reach the tomb. Tears spill down your face as you bend to look inside once more. Two figures in radiant white sit where Jesus' body lay. You can't even begin to think what this means. Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they've put him. You turn away to catch your breath and find another man standing right there. At first you think Peter or John has returned, but it's not one of them. Maybe it's a gardener. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Mary. The moment he speaks your name, you see, you understand. It's Jesus. Teacher! You fling yourself at his feet because there isn't anything else you can do. Gently, he touches your shoulder. Do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. You rise to your feet, still weeping, but your tears are full of joy. You start to run again because you can't wait one second more to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus chose to face death for those he loved, and now he's defeated it. Jesus is alive. It's the best news ever for everyone across all time. Hey kids, welcome back. Wasn't that an incredible story? The story of Jesus is amazing. It is the best and most important story the world has ever known. Jesus did something for you and he did something for me that no one else in the history of the world has ever been able to do. And that is 
help you have an opportunity to have your sins forgiven. Now, a question that I get a lot from people, though, is how did we get to that point? Why did Jesus even have to come and do that in the first place? Now, to get an answer to that, we have to go back. And I mean way back, way back all the way to the beginning when God created the earth. See, God created the earth perfect. He created trees and the sky and the water and the land and the animals. And at the very end of creation, he created the very best part. And that was people. In fact, after God created people and he looked at his creation, he said, it is very good. And the world was perfect. It was amazing. Those people had the opportunity to actually hang out with God. They got to walk with God and talk with God. I don't know, maybe they played tennis with God. They had an incredible time connecting with God in amazing ways. But see, God gave those people one rule. Everyone say one rule. And that one rule was this, just don't eat the fruit off of this one tree in this huge garden. In fact, there were probably thousands of trees that Adam and Eve could eat off of, and God just said, don't eat off the one. Well, guess what Adam and Eve, the very first people did? That's right, they ate from the one tree. And for the very first time in history, people did something different than what God had asked them to do. And when we do something different, when we do the opposite of what God has asked us to do, or we don't do what God has asked us to do, that is called sin. And sin causes all kinds of problems and issues. In fact, it looks a little bit like this. The world was perfect, clear and beautiful, like this bowl of water. But when Adam and Eve sinned, it's like they poured all this icky, kind of gross, disgusting junk into this perfect creation. So now it wasn't perfect anymore. It wasn't clear, it wasn't beautiful. So here's the problem. See, God was still perfect. And God being perfect could not be with people that were not perfect. And so created separation between God and his children. Now, do you think God was sad about that? Do you think the people were sad about that? Yeah, I bet they were very sad. In fact, imagine if you were separated from your parents and you couldn't spend any more time with your parents, how would you feel? And if you were, think about your parents. If they weren't able to spend any more time with you, how would they feel? That would be so hard. But see, here's the great news of the Bible. In fact, the whole Bible really is talking about the fact that God put together a rescue mission to save us from our sin. He wanted to be back and connected to his children. And so he sent Jesus. Jesus came as a little baby. He grew up. And Jesus is the only person who's ever lived on earth who has never sinned. He never made a mistake. He never lied. He never stole anything. He never treated someone unkindly. He was never unfair. Jesus was perfect. Jesus went about doing amazing things, healing people and blessing people and teaching people about God. He was God's very son. But then Jesus knew he had a special mission, and that was Jesus had to go, and as you just saw in the story, had people be very mean to him and hurt him and kick him and spit on him and nail him to a cross. Now, why did Jesus do that? Well, because we had sin in our life. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. In other words, the wages of sin, when we sin, what we deserve is to be eternally separated from God. So what Jesus did, because he was perfect, Jesus died on the cross, and he took our punishment for us. Here's just kind of a silly analogy about that. Imagine that you're in your house and you're playing around and you accidentally break your mom's favorite vase or your mom's favorite lamp. She's going to be mad, isn't she? So suddenly mom comes running in and she's mad and she's upset and she's like, you are going to be in huge trouble. And she gives you all these different punishments that she's going to do. But at the very last minute, your brother comes running in the room and and he says, mom, I know that I didn't do this. I didn't break the vase. I didn't break the lamp. But I want you to punish me instead of my brother or instead of my sister. Would you be thankful if your brother or sister did that for you? I bet you'd be like, oh, my brother and sister are awesome because they took the punishment for me. Well, Jesus has done that on a huge level for the whole world. Jesus took the punishment that you and me and everyone else in the world deserved. That is why Jesus is so awesome. And so when Jesus died on the cross, this cross, he was nailed to the cross and died. It's like he went down into this creation that was full of sin and ickiness and grossness. And he was in there. And when he died on the cross, 
It's like he took all of our sin on himself so that we went from being sinful, that when God looks at us now, he sees Jesus' perfection. And it's like we're back to that perfect state that we were in in the garden. So therefore, we can be back together in relationship with God. It's incredible. So here's the the awesome message of Easter, kids, is that Jesus is offering us this free gift. This gift, this gift, if we will just say yes to making Jesus the leader of our life, we can be forgiven of our sins and we can be back in relationship with God, talking with him, connecting with him, and then we get to spend forever and ever in heaven, the most amazing place. In fact, it's more amazing than you could ever imagine with God because of what Jesus has done. So the next question people ask is, how do I get this gift? I don't see a gift in front of me. There isn't wrapping paper or a gift bag or tissue paper. How do I receive this incredible gift from Jesus? And and kids, it's actually really simple. It's A, B, C. I think you all know your ABCs, right? A stands for admit. That means we need to admit that we've sinned. We need to talk to God and say, you know what? I have sinned. I have made wrong choices. Maybe I've lied or I've been mean to my brother or I've taken something that wasn't mine or maybe I cheated on a test or whatever it might be. We admit that we need help. We admit that we maybe have some stuff in our life that we need to be forgiven for. So we admit. B stands for believe. That means that we believe that Jesus came to this earth, that he lived the perfect life, that he went through this, this terrible death so that we could live forever. We believe that Jesus came and did what the Bible says that he did. And last is C, we choose. We choose to say, I don't want to be the leader of my life anymore. When I was the leader of my life, I kept sinning. I kept doing these wrong things and I was separated from God. But I am choosing Jesus to come in and be the leader of my life. So that when God looks at me, he sees Jesus standing there with us. We choose to say, Jesus, come in and be the leader of my life. So A, we admit B, we believe, and C, we choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. Now, I know some of you watching here today have already done that. You've already had an opportunity to pray, to admit, and believe, and choose. And for that, we are so happy. We are so thankful. We give you a big round of applause for having done that. But some of you watching this today have never done that. You've never taken the moment to say, Jesus, I need you. I've done wrong things in my life and I want to be forgiven. I want to be in relationship with you. I want you, Jesus, to be the leader of my life. And so I want to give you an opportunity right now to do that. So we're going to say a prayer and I want to encourage you kids to say this prayer with me. You can say it quietly in your heart and you can say it out loud. Uh, And then we're going to talk about what to do next. So we're going to pray for those of you who've never said yes to Jesus to do that. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth, living the perfect life, healing people and blessing people and being incredible. But most of all, Jesus, we thank you that you are willing to take our punishment from us. You are willing to die on a cross. You are willing to have bad things happen to you so now that bad things don't have to happen to me, that I can be forgiven for my sins. I can be back in relationship with God. I can talk with him and connect with him. And one day, live in heaven with you forever and ever. So first, Lord, I admit that I have sin in my life. I admit that I have done wrong things. I admit that I have sinned. Lord, I also believe, Jesus, that you came to this earth, that you lived the perfect life, that you died on the cross and you rose again on Easter. We thank you for that and we believe that, Lord. And lastly, Lord, we choose, Lord, I choose, Jesus, for you to be the leader of my life, for you to come into my life, to lead me and guide me and direct me. And Lord, by choosing you, I know that I am forgiven for my sins and I get to be in heaven forever with God. I thank you for this. Thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to do this in your son's name. Amen. Well, kids, the Bible says a miracle has happened in your life today when you've done that. Your life has gone from being separated from God to being back together and connected to God. And the Bible also says there are angels in heaven having a party for you because you've done that today. Now, kids and moms and dads, the next step for you is we want you to go to a website that's going to come up here when we're done with our time together. We want you to click on that website and let us know that you've made this important decision to say yes to Jesus. And we want to send you some gifts and some resources to help you on what's next. What's the next step 
in your faith journey and your relationship with God now that you've said yes to Jesus. So everyone, happy Easter. We're so excited to have spent this time with you. We pray blessing upon your family, safety and health, and we pray you have an amazing Easter, and we hope to see you soon at Woods Kids.